Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at the monthly calendar for Nissan in the year 5995, that will cover March, April in the year 2023. And we're talking about the festival days. And in this class, what we're gonna be doing is looking at the special days over the course of this first month. I'm gonna be telling you when these holy convocations and special days are, giving you a brief summary of what we'll be doing on each one of those days. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. But before we get into that, we need to declare the new month, blow the trumpets for the new month, which we started doing back on the 22nd of March when the new moon was sighted first reported on this channel in our community section. We saw it ourselves here at the Hillbilly Homestead. So if I had a rush to back, I could have been the first to report, but I spent a little bit extra time blowing the trumpets. So there was others who reported before I did. So my personal visualization counts as a confirmation, but we can also get another confirmation at truthofyahweh.org where they allow people from around the world to report out on the new moon. And you can see that there were people from all over the world who reported sighting the new moon on the 22nd of March. Lots of people in Arizona saw it because they had clear skies over there which must have been the case in Florida because there was a lot of people who reported out seeing the new moon in Florida. Iowa and Jamaica had a few reports, Pennsylvania and Rhode Island, and the four people out there in Texas saw it on the 22nd. Let's jump right into the calendar. Now, of course, the first day to mention has already passed. That would have been new moon day, which would have been March the 23rd. That was the official first day of the first month starting the evening of March the 22nd with the sighting of the new moon. Then the next day to talk about on this list would be the Sabbath day. But before we do, let's jump over and let's look at Leviticus 23 so we can compare it to these days we're looking at. Now I'm gonna start here at verse one and read some of this. It says, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed times, the Lord's appointed times, which you will declare to be holy occasions. Now, it should be noted that he's saying that these are his feasts. Verse 3 says, Work can be done for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of special rest, a holy convocation. You must not do any work in it. Wheresoever you live, it is a Sabbath to the Lord. So this is talking about the Sabbath day. And so that's the first holy convocation that we should be talking about in this month. And it will be falling on Thursdays. The Sabbath days will be on Thursdays through the first month or through the first season in the year 2023. So I'll say it again, it's very important that the Sabbath days have moved to Thursdays. Verse four says, these are the Lord's appointed times, holy occasions, which you will celebrate at their appointed times. And notice that this translation keeps saying appointed times. Now, coming back, looking at the calendar, we say that the next day listed here is the 10th day of the first month. This is when each household is supposed to choose their lamb for Passover. So April the 1st will be choice day. But it should also be noted that this is the day that the Messiah came into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey and they were shouting Hosanna. Uh, we did a class not too long ago. Turns out this Hosanna is actually his name that they were calling. It would have been more like Hosanna. But y'all check out that video. I'll give you a link either here or at the end of this one. I just wanted to point out that that's what the Messiah was doing on the 10th day of the first month. Thing is, you won't actually find anything listed in Leviticus 23 on that day. You see the next holy convocation talked about is Passover in verse 5, which says the Lord's Passover is on the 14th day of the first month at twilight. And notice that that's the only thing it really says about that. So that would actually occur on the 4th. April the 4th at twilight, right after the sun goes down 
on April the 4th will be this Passover meal. This is the night that the Last Supper took place back there with our Messiah. We can read about that in the book of Matthew and Luke chapter 22. If you remember the story, the disciples were looking for a place to kill the Passover lamb during the daylight hours of what we would know as April the 4th. And then they would have dispatched that animal right at twilight on April the 4th before they had the Last Supper on April the 4th of the year 2023. At least when we will do it, because if we wait till April the 5th, then we've actually missed all of those events. We have to remember that that's the day when they put the Messiah on the cross. April the 5th is Passover day. But the Last Supper, the Marriage Supper, the Covenant Communion Supper had taken place the night before. That's real important to note here because that is the time of the Lord's Passover. You notice that it gives us a very specific time, twilight, that we are to do this communion. That's the evening right after sunset on April the 4th. But anyway, let's go on. The next verse says, The Lord's festival of unleavened bread is on the 15th day of the same month. Ye must eat unleavened bread for seven days. So this is talking about April the 6th. It would actually start the evening of April the 5th. That's when they will actually eat the Passover that they slaughtered the day before. They put the blood on the doorpost on April the 4th in the year 2023. And then they roasted that lamb for about six to eight hours during the daylight hours of April the 5th. And then it was after sunset on April the 5th that they had that Sabbath day meal starting at that holy convocation, which would be unleavened bread, which would end on the evening of April the 6th, at least the first day of it will end on April the 6th. Back here, verse 7 says, On the first day you will hold a holy convocation and must not do any job-related work. So this right here is a day we want to take off. If we work the night shift, we want to take the evening of the 5th off. But if we work the day shift, then we want to have April the 6th off. That's going to be one day we have to put to take off work. Um, notice that there was no requirement to take off work on the Passover, just do the communion meal. But now we're in the first day of unleavened bread and we're being told not to do any job related work or any servile work. The um, King James Version says. But verse eight says you will offer food gifts to the Lord for seven days. The seventh day will be a holy convocation. You must not do any job related work. And we can look in the King James Version where it's talking about this seventh day is a holy convocation. You should do no servile work therein, which sounds a lot like a Sabbath day. This would actually be talking about April the 12th being a day of no servile work, a holy convocation. So that would actually be back to back with the Sabbath day, which would be on the 22nd day of the first month or April the 13th. So when it comes to these days off, technically we should have both days off work or abstaining from this job related work or this servile work on April the 12th because it is the seventh day of unleavened bread and then the Sabbath day, which follows on Thursday, April the 13th. Anyway, verse nine says, the Lord said to Moses, speaking to the Israelites to say to them, when you enter the land that I am giving you and harvest is produce, you must bring the first bundle of your harvest to the priests. This is getting into the first fruit celebration. This is going to be the next celebration on the list. Now, notice that Leviticus 23 has already gone through the Feast of Unleavened Bread, has actually finished talking about it that whole week. And now it's actually getting into a whole nother festival day. It says the priest will lift up the bundle before the Lord so that it will be acceptable on your behalf. The priest will do this on the day after the Sabbath. Now, this we have to pay close attention to because there's a lot of misunderstandings in this area. There's a lot of people who want to start the Feast of first fruits on the 16th day of the month, which would have been the day that the Messiah was seen, was risen out of his tomb. 
But when you read closer to the Messiah's resurrection story, you'll see that it was on the eighth day that he actually presented himself to the disciples, allowing him to touch him and even feed him because by then he was fully resurrected. So the 16th, although he was seen outside of the grave, he was told he told everybody not to touch him. It was the eighth day that he came to be back with the disciples and that would have been the day of that first fruit celebration. And this year it will be April the 14th. Note that if the first fruit celebration had have been on April the 7th, it would actually fall in the middle of the week of unleavened bread. This is another independent point. This would actually be two festival days in the same week, unleavened bread and first fruits. And they are actually contradictory to one another. You see back here in Leviticus 23, when it's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it says you will eat unleavened bread for seven days. But then notice down here in verse 14, when it's talking about the Feast of first fruits, it says you must not eat any bread. So I just wanted to point that out, that if first fruits was on the 16th, you would actually be forced to contradict yourself are commanded not to eat any bread and you are commanded to eat unleavened bread at the same time. But that's two different independent points that proves and we can we can come up with more that first fruits is actually on the 23rd day of the first month. That's when the Omar count starts. After the Sabbath day it says on the day the bundle is lifted up for you, you must offer a flawless one year old lamb as an entirely burnt offering to the Lord. The accompanying grain offering must be two tenth deals of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil and a food gifts for the Lord. A soothing smell. The accompanying drink offering must be a quarter of a hen of wine. You must not eat any bread, roasted grain or or fresh grain until the exact day when you bring your God's offering. This is a permanent rule throughout your future generations wherever you live. This is talking about the Feast of First Fruits. So after this day, we're not supposed to eat any bread or roasted grain for 50 days until we get to the Feast of Pentecost. Where it starts talking about that. In verse 15, where it says you must count off seven weeks, starting with the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of the uplifted offering. These must be complete. You must count 50 days until the day after the seventh Sabbath. But that covers all of the special days for this month. Father willing, we'll be doing more classes to, to give more details on what exactly we're supposed to be doing on these days and different stuff as we get closer. So make sure you subscribe. If you're new to the channel, please leave a comment to introduce yourself. Hit that like button. Pray for us and we'll do the same for you. Salawama.